the man known simply as Tookie remains a man enshrouded by myth. He'll forever symbolize the rise of America's most notorious gang, the Crips. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're examining the life and legacy of Stanley Tookie Williams, a pivotal figure in Los Angeles gang culture. From the time Williams walked into the chamber to the last moment he took his last breath, 36 minutes had passed. The birth of the Crips. Tookie Williams' early time in South Central Los Angeles was shaped by many hardships that set the stage for his later involvement in the founding of the Crips. Born on December 29, 1953 in New Orleans, Louisiana, Williams moved to Los Angeles with his mother, seeking better opportunities. However, the reality awaiting them in South Central was harsh. I moved to South Central from Louisiana when I was nine years old. Williams' upbringing was marked by the absence of a stable support system. His single mother, striving to make ends meet, struggled to shield him from the realities of a neighborhood rife with crime and limited prospects. The lack of positive role models and opportunities for advancement exacerbated the allure of the streets as an alternative means of survival. And that's when I learned then that I had to be strong. You know, it was either I was going to be a victim or victimizer, so I had to gain my respect very fast. The pervasive atmosphere of neglect and systemic failures became a breeding ground for the emergence of gangs, transforming the neighborhood into a cauldron of social unrest. In 1969, against the backdrop of escalating racial tensions and increasing violence, Williams, alongside Raymond Washington, founded the Crips, initially conceived as a form of protection. In the late 1960s, from the blacktop playgrounds of Fremont High School, emerged this new order led by South LA teenager Raymond Washington. This early period adds a layer of complexity to Williams' later narrative, highlighting the blurred lines between victimhood and perpetration. Williams' history and the trajectory of the Crips are inextricably linked to racial dynamics and systemic racism. There were, however, an extremely exclusive web of racially restrictive housing covenants that kept blacks in particular areas and out of other areas. These covenants mandated the sale of real estate, along racial lines. South Central Los Angeles, predominantly inhabited by African Americans, faced systemic neglect, redlining, and discriminatory practices. Black people were sort of forced to live on top of each other because it just wasn't possible to live where you chose. The lack of economic opportunities and access to quality education compounded the sense of disenfranchisement, fueling the growth of gangs. The proliferation of street gangs had a profound impact on the demographic landscape of Los Angeles territories became sharply delineated along racial and ethnic lines, contributing to the stratification of neighborhoods. Over the next four decades, warring crip and blood sets would carve the streets of South LA into a grid of rival territories. Rivalry between the Crips and the Bloods, another prominent gang, eventually fueled a cycle of violence that engulfed entire communities. Double life. Williams' leading role was characterized by violence, criminal activity, and the bolstering of a culture that wreaked havoc on Los Angeles communities. We both collected young groups of warriors around. We cleaned the other gangs out. As a key figure in the group's formation, he played a central role in shaping the organization's identity, which eventually became synonymous with brutality and criminal enterprise. The Crips, initially founded as a response to external threats, underwent a drastic and dire evolution. The Crips really became so powerful so fast that nobody really wanted to mess with us because they knew that we were going to mash other gangs. The Crips evolved into a powerful criminal organization during the early 1970s. Williams, as a prominent figure within the group, engaged in recruitment activities, drawing disenfranchised youth into the allure of the street. Crip mania spread like wildfire on dry grass. The look and defiant posture struck a chord, and the gang quickly emerged as a surrogate family for the so-called orphans of the civil rights movement. The glamorization of the brutal and exploitative lifestyle, coupled with the harsh realities of poverty and limited opportunities, made recruitment efforts successful. Amid his involvement, however, Williams sought to present an alternative narrative by taking on the role of a youth counselor. In a seemingly paradoxical move, he worked with troubled youth in an attempt to steer them away from the very existence he helped perpetuate. Tookie was responsible for food, preparing it, buying it, uh, cleanliness of the home, making sure kids got the doctor's appointments, uh, that they were keeping their grades up in school. I mean, he had the whole gamut of responsibility. Williams used his own experiences to connect with young individuals on the fringes of society. 
His counseling sessions ostensibly delved into the root causes of gang involvement, addressing systemic issues such as poverty, lack of educational opportunities, and racial inequality. But Williams' involvement in the formation of the Crips and subsequent recruitment efforts actually revolved around the active exploitation of youth. Williams, as a prominent figure, played a key role in bolstering a culture that drew young people into a cycle of violence and crime. We morphed into a monster. We performed uh, mayhem and uh, aggression uh, throughout the city. We uh, terrorized everybody. We made it a living hell. Incarceration and Transformation the pivotal moment in Williams' career of crime occurred in 1981, after he was arrested and later convicted for four brutal murders committed during two separate robberies. Williams was convicted of all four murders and sentenced to die. This marked a dramatic shift, as the former leader eventually found himself on death row, facing the consequences of being immersed in violence and crime. However, it was within the confines of prison that Williams' identity took an unexpected turn. While incarcerated, Williams claimed to undergo a profound transformation. During his 20 plus years in prison, Williams claims to have seen the error in his ways. Although never confessing to the killings or giving police information about the Crips, Williams began to publicly denounce the gang life. He revealed a previously untapped intellectual capacity and immersed himself in literature, philosophy, and religious studies, displaying a commitment to self-improvement that contrasted sharply with his past as a gang leader. Williams became a vocal critic of violence from within prison, writing children's books denouncing the very path he had once championed. He wrote a series of books for children about the evils of gangs and has, multiple times, been nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. This metamorphosis led to the emergence of the second act of Tookie Williams' life, his role as an anti-gang advocate. He actively engaged in outreach programs aimed at steering young people away from the path of violence and criminality. Williams' advocacy work transcended the confines of his prison cell, as he sought to undo the damage caused by the culture he had helped establish. I never imagined that the Crip gang would spread throughout California, throughout the nation, throughout the world and I deeply regret the legacy that it left. Skeptics, however, questioned the sincerity and extent of his efforts, casting them as a transparent attempt to evade responsibility and escape the death penalty. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Quest for Redemption Williams' story has been portrayed in various media, notably the 2004 movie Redemption, The Stan Tookie Williams Story, featuring Jamie Foxx. I used to be the king of the Crips. Look at my kingdom now. This is not a gladiator school. You will not prove anything in here. The film chronicles Williams' past, his involvement in the Crips, and his journey toward denouncing gangs while on death row. Williams also co-authored his autobiography, Blue Rage, Black Redemption, shedding light on his experiences and transformation. In the hip-hop realm, Tookie Williams has been referenced in numerous songs, solidifying his presence in urban culture. Rapper Snoop Dogg, affiliated with the Rollin' 20 Crips, often mentioned Williams in his music, portraying him as both a symbol and a cautionary tale. He recorded the song Real Soon in support of clemency for Williams, and after Williams was nonetheless executed, recited a poem called Until We Meet Again at the Funeral Service. We got the hottest shit burning on the turntables. I won't deny it, I'm a straight rider. The double life of Stan Tookie Williams, oscillating between the infamy of Crips leadership and the redemption-seeking anti-gang advocate behind bars, reflects the complexities of personal transformation and the enduring struggle to reconcile a troubled past. It raises questions about redemption, the justice system, and the potential for positive influence emerging from a deep entanglement with crime and violence. This man means that people can change, you know, that, that uh, young black men and women uh, can, can, can move out and, and struggle against, um, you know, the odds that are placed against them, you know, and um, he is a, he's a beacon of hope to many people. William's execution on December 13th, 2005 marked the end of his time. But his legacy persists in the ongoing discussions about the root causes of gangs, systemic failures, and the possibilities for rehabilitation. We've just been notified that the official time of death is 1236. 
Um, an official just came out and told us that the execution is over. The Crips, despite the controversies surrounding their founder, continue to be a presence in Los Angeles and beyond, highlighting the enduring challenges faced by communities grappling with the complexities of street gangs. What do you think about the life of Tookie Williams? Let us know in the comments. Self-hate inflicted by the system itself is what was making him and people like him so violent.